startuprad.io, your podcast and YouTube blog covering the German startup scene with news, interviews, and live events. Hello and welcome, everybody. This is Joe from StartupRate.io, your startup podcast and YouTube blog from Germany, as well as the world's first internet radio station dedicated to startups and tech companies. Today, we bring you episode number three of our Entrepreneur Tools. If you go down here, in the show notes, there will be a link to uh, to LinkedIn profile of our guest, Simon, as well as a link to our blog post where we have a wrap up of his methodology in all the show notes we or he better put together. Um, our episode, I, I, I just love the headline because we work together a, in an online document and we called it Bullshit Free Service Design and Data Driven Business Solution. I just love this title. Hey, Simon, how you doing? Hi, uh, Joe. Thank you so much for the invitation uh, and the opportunity to uh, to present myself on your network. Um, I love the title. I love the title as well. Uh, it's a topic that's close to my heart. So, and uh, as you can tell, maybe by the sticker behind me, you can see it. I, uh, people who are here, there's a there's a whiteboard with a sticker behind me. Uh, that says no bullshit, uh, because on my whiteboard, I don't allow any bullshit. <laughs> and, uh, uh, yeah, I try to do that in life and business as well. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, we have been talking and basically you convinced me, uh, to make an episode of entrepreneurship tools together with you for the very simple reason. I like your approach, but, um, you have not always been living in Germany as a freelancer. Actually, you have roots in the U.S. and Canada, right? Right. So um, I I was born in Germany. I'm German, right? Uh, I was born in Germany, and then as a as a child, I just started elementary school. Uh, we uh, moved to Canada with the family uh, because my dad was transferred uh, from work, um, working uh, in the pharmaceutical industry, uh, and. Um, uh, then, uh, uh, yeah, almost just under two years later, we were transferred again to, uh, the United States, to Connecticut. Uh, and then, uh, roughly five years later, we, uh, we were back in Germany. And then I, uh, finished school in Germany, did my apprenticeship in Germany at Henkel in Dusseldorf. Uh, and, uh, then, uh, yeah, my studies took me all over, all over the world, mostly Asia. Um, and, um, then I started working in consulting, uh, specifically data science, big data, uh, business intelligence consulting. Uh, and uh, after uh, some experience with a big consulting firm and uh, a startup, um, I uh, decided to go the freelancer route and um, go into business for myself. And now I'm currently in a, a position where I've gained a lot of experience and I've seen what works, what doesn't work. And I kind of uh, poured the, all that into a couple of frameworks that I that I really want to teach um, a team of people. Uh, and um, so I'm looking to grow my team currently at the Data Warrior. And um, that's why it's such a fantastic opportunity to uh, to be on here. And uh, again, thanks for having me on. Um, and I hope we can. Uh, you just have a nice conversation, uh, and, uh, maybe, uh, um, yeah, um, uh, maybe some people will feel inclined to get in touch on LinkedIn afterwards. Uh, I'd love, I'm always open for a chat. Uh, I'd love to have a conversation and, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's about it. I'm just a I'm value driven, uh, human being, uh, family man and, uh, I like to meet, you know, interesting people and, you know, work together with, uh, uh, with driven people who, uh, who are passionate about data. Um, l l let us quickly jump in because first thing we talk about is putting value first in your methodology, right? Right. So, um, really quick, uh, I, I like to keep things simple, right? That doesn't mean they're easy, right? But I like to keep things simple. And we have a saying in German that says, uh, all good things are three, 
right? And uh, I think also um, Nikola Tesla had something about the numbers 369, right? And I found that there's, uh, uh, there's, you know, power in numbers, um, and, uh, and data, uh, and, uh, and frameworks. And, uh, one of these frameworks is my mo maximize, monetize, multiply framework for building a business that I found to be effective. Um, and, uh, the, um, first thing you want to do, right? So we have three, three core uh, pillars for, for my, that I, that I uh, try to build my business on currently. Right. And, uh, the key is to provide value. At, that's number one. It has to be, you have to be customer centric in, uh, you know, a digital economy, um, where, where literally anyone can do anything, right? It's so important or anyone can buy anything from anyone, right? It's so important to be hyper focused on your customer and uh, to really try to understand how can you best provide value for them. So that has to be number one for me, right? That's something we want have to maximize. What, what struck me home just um, a few years back was basically, uh, I, for example, when I was living in in the US, I brought back the tradition of Thanksgiving because it also coincides with the start of the Christmas season here in Germany. And uh, since a few years, we also have Thanksgiving turkey, not on Thursday, but on Friday. And so I want to order some Thanksgiving decorations, some stuff. And basically what I found right now, there's almost always a way to order almost everything online from any given country. There's a package forwarding service, there are VPNs, there are even call and short message forwarding services. So basically you can order from any place, anywhere in the world if you're willing to go your way. So basically you are always, in, at least in digital terms, in retail, if there is no legal restriction, you are always competing against the global market at the same time. Exactly, exactly. Right. So let, let's, yeah, let, 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 let's, let's talk about how to outcompete the global market. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Let's do that. So how do you stick out in such a global market? Mm. Like, think about it simply. That's what I, that's what that's, that's, I always try to make it simple. If you can't explain it in simple terms, then you don't really understand it. Right. That's, I, I don't know who said that, but, um, I'm sure, I'm sure that's been said. Um, uh, but I, I, I genuinely believe that's true. That is a true story. It really sounds like the, the, the knowledge, uh, SpongeBob or Barney, the, the, uh, dinosaur with this pens, but actually it's something very true because always when people ask me, Oh, what's special about startup radio? I tell them we are the only consistent source of startup news, information and interviews from Germany in English. And that's basically our value proposition. That's why we scored. I think by now it should be somewhere around above 3000 days in podcast charts across more than 50 countries. That is amazing. Congratulations. My hat, I tip my hat to that because it's, uh, it's, um, it's something that I'm uh, still struggling with, right? Getting my message out there. That's why I, th I celebrate this opportunity to be on here. Um, because at, you know, at the, uh, on the one side, you know, I think maybe many people struggle with this. You, you, you have an idea, um, but you don't, you don't necessarily know how to communicate it best out into the world. Right. And, um, I yeah. think, uh, you've done a fantastic job uh, of doing that. And I know we talked earlier, right. And I know your, your very, you know, your, your methodology and the way you, you, uh, use your time. It's very, very smart. And, um, uh, that's really what, uh, a, a great deal of the work that I do is also about, right? I want to maximize, uh, I want to maximize value by saving people time so they can focus on what really matters, right? And how, yeah. Okay. And now tell us <laughs> how to do that. Uh, <laughs> just one sentence. That, that's enough. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, number one, you need to develop the ability to absorb information, everything, ideas, right? And uh, in order to do that, you uh, you must be value-based. You must be value-driven. And if you really want to absorb everything, every good idea that comes your way, right, you need to be grateful, 
as we discussed earlier, it's so important to be grateful. Um, you brought Thanksgiving over, uh, you know, and, uh, it really, it's a, it's a great, um, it's the only way to really have an open mind, right? Uh, if you, if you, if you're coming from a place of gratitude instead of a cynical place, a place of cynicism, right? Um, so if you really, if you, if you're really grateful, right, for the value you can, you, you are, you, uh, can bring someone, right? Uh, if you, you, um, let's say you care, you need to care about your customer. You need to care about the people that, um, yeah, you can provide value for it because they make you money at the end of the day. We're in business, right? And there's no shame in making a lot of money, right? So the key to really uh, making a lot of money in business is to help a lot of people, right? And uh, being grateful for every opportunity you get to help someone, right? And that will open you up to uh, get everything you want, yeah? Uh, and uh, do, do you have... a uh do you have any suggestions how how to do that? Because I see here uh, to create an avatar. W would that be the first step in your methodology? So you want to provide uh, value to a client, to a potential customer. And first you have to see, okay, who's the customer? Exactly, right? So I think the, the, the concept of a customer avatar is not new, right? I think it's, uh, it's uh, maybe just a lot of people haven't heard of it, right? Um, so maybe just really quick, a customer avatar is, um, exactly what you need in order to answer the question, who do you want to serve? Right. And who you want to serve is often a, a function of who can you serve, right? How, what, what value can you bring to someone, right? What do you know something about? Where do you think you, uh, can, um, uh, what do you think you can add to someone's current situation that makes it better? Right. That's number one. And mm -hmm. uh, in order to be able to do that, you need to know what problem does that person have? What problem are you solving? What, what specific, what specific challenge is this person, does this person have? And does this person have specific characteristics? Um, or what specific characteristics does that person have? Just answer that question. Right. What specific characteristics does the person that you want to help have? Right. And that is your customer avatar. Really think about what problem do they have and how can I solve it? Right. And then it's really, yeah. I personally <laughs> like the, the jobs to be done theory that that's, that's really a really good thing. Uh, basically you can apply to many, many different places, but jobs to be done. What is a job to be done? Uh, Clayton Christensen came up with this methodology and basically the idea is what is a job your customer needs to be done, you can do for them and they will pay you for that. Exactly. That's, that's like a very practical way of saying what I was, was attempting to say, right? I love it. That's exactly it, right? Mm. Who needs some, who needs something done for them? Right. That is value. If you can do something for someone that needs it done, that has a need, what is your customer's need? Right. It's basic. I think that's very basic marketing, but it's important to just state it very clearly. Right. Um, yeah. And quite frequently I come across, for example, um, an avatar, you, usually uh, startups very early are prone to this. They say, okay, we're selling to men between 25 and 45 above average uh, education, above average income. And I was going, and? Well, that's our avatar. But there's nothing special about it. There's no way uh, you are differentiating yourself against competition with such an avatar. There's no special need. There's no job to be done in your avatar. And that's what you really need to think about. Because if, if I ever see an avatar like this again, I'll start screaming. It's, it's so frequently that I see that I've seen this in the past. It's, it's just undescript, I would say. Yeah. And there's a, I, there's a disconnect there somewhere. Um, because ultimately your customer should be someone you care about, right? Uh, and someone you care about, you, you, I, I would argue you would be able to describe them you, you, in quite some detail, right? 
Uh, and uh, you could probably also say why you care about them so much, right? And if that if that's not something that's in your customer avatar description, then um, you don't you don't really have one. You don't have one, right? You don't have a customer avatar if you don't care about your customer, right? That needs to be reflected in your customer avatar, which is ultimately just a document that clearly states, you know, who that person is in detail. That's it. It's not easy, but it's you, you should be able to describe it as as someone uh, like one of your good acquaintances. Uh, you know what they like. You know where they are. You know uh, what the, uh, what they spent their money for. That's about the level. Okay. First avatar check. Next step. Right. Well, once you know exactly who you want to talk to, well, what are you going to tell them? Uh, yeah, uh, we're great. That's not really a good marketing message. <laughs> it's it's a very me I driven message. Like you, it's 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 not really about what can I do for you. Right? I want to, like, as a customer, I want to know what a, what a specific service provider or what a specific product can, can, how, how that transforms my life. And just knowing that you're the best at something or that you, you have all these different features doesn't really answer that question clearly. It just creates more, it might create some confusion in the mind of your customer, but it doesn't really answer the question. And he's still, Uh, you're not really helping him make the decision if if you are the right choice for him, mm -hmm. right? And I think that's what it's about, right? Um, helping your customer understand whether or not you are the right choice for for them, and uh, in order to convey that, your your communication needs to be on point, right? And if it's not on point, um, then either you're not going to be closing as many sales as you as you could. Right. Um, you are going to be probably be wasting marketing dollars or marketing euros, um, because you're not really talking to the person that's ideal for your product. Um, so you really want to work on your message. Mm -hmm. Right. How am I going to talk? How, how can I address this person, um, that, um, catches his interest, right? The classic AIDA formula, right? Attention, interest, desire, action, right? Um, how can I uh, c capture this person's attention to make sure that he will listen to me long enough, right? To, uh, to understand whether or not I'm the right choice for him, right? How I need to make it as obvious as possible to that person that we, sh we need to be in business, right? And you can only do that if you have a, a message that, um, that, clearly tells them what problem you solve for them, how you're going to solve it, and um, that you care. That you care about doing that for them. That's it. Very simple, but it's not And easy. that should be... Yeah, and that simple. should be really like customer care. Um, I'm currently in the process of setting up a profile with the US based website. And actually, they sent me emails from customer care. And the first two or three emails in customer care are just standardized emails where they just, uh, sent me all the stuff that's already on their website. And I reply, you haven't read my message yet. And then they sent me something new once again from the website. And I already know that stuff and they haven't read my message. Nobody ever bothered to read my message. And that is not customer care. They don't care. They don't care. They don't care. And they, and when somebody shows you that they don't care, believe them. They're showing you who they are. So believe them, right? I'm not going to do business with someone that doesn't care about me. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and uh, that's what needs to come across in your communication, right? And listening is as much communication as speaking. Or as not listening. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, if, you're, if you're not listening, you're not communicating, right? Because uh, communication consists of listening, right? And speaking. But in between, there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, noise, 
right? Mm -hmm. And it's important to um, be able to cut through the noise because whatever you say is going to go in someone's ear and whatever they say back to you is going to be processed first somehow, right? Uh -huh. uh, and have you ever played that game Silent Telephone, I think it's called? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how the message is distorted once it comes out the other end? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. You gotta um, work on not distorting that message. What would be the type of questions you should ask yourself to come up with this message? Well, first of all, uh, you need to have your you, you need to have your customer avatar, right? So that's that's number one, right? Who who are you talking to, right? It needs to be focused on them, right? And then you need to be able to uh, need to be able to ask yourself, okay, what what can I do for them, right? So the specific, be, spe be very specific about, you know, what can I do for them? Um, and that includes how fast can I do it for them, right? So ask yourself who needs what done when. And then what's the next step? We have an avatar, we have a message, and the next step would be? Well, you need to make them, you know, some kind of offer, right? But I want to, I want to maybe return to the message because I, I, I feel like, uh, I feel like there's a better answer there, uh, to be given. I, I want to give a lot of value, right? To the listeners. Um, and, um, everybody's also welcome to, as I said, connect on LinkedIn. Uh, but let me just give you the the core of, of this framework, right? So you want to ask yourself for your message, what is my, you know, what, what is my main uh, metric? What is my main currency with the customer, right? What can I increase for them, right? What do they care about? And how can I increase whatever they care about for them, right? And how do I measure this? needs to also be in, in there, right? So I was talking about, okay, how, so you need to be specific, right? I, I, so ask yourself, what can I increase for them, right? How can you increase it, right? You need to know that, right? And how to measure this, right? So it needs to be, uh, if you want to help someone, in, uh, if you have a, uh, the rockstar method for, in, for increasing someone's sales, right? Then I'm going to measure that by revenue, right? As an example, right? And then you need to know how long it's going to take for them to achieve that level of success with your help, right? So what's the timeline, right? Typical, uh, typically, if you're dealing with organizations, your timeline is going to be quarterly at least. So how can you, uh, and then they're probably going to decide whether or not the uh, collaboration with you was fruitful or not, right? So you, I would say once you've made a sale, you can always, um, uh, you can always, you always have like the three month period of, uh, where, okay, let's see, let's see what, if this really produces some results. So I would say like 90 days is a good time frame to solve someone's problem in a business context, right? So if, if you're dealing, uh, you know, with the data digital, uh, and, uh, sales kind of, uh, business models that exist, um, especially consulting. Right. Uh, and, uh, then you really, uh, want to, uh, also, uh, put an emphasis on what, uh, pain can be avoided if they work, uh, together with you, if they decide to work together with you. So you, you want to address your customer. You want to tell them what they care about and, uh, how you can help them increase what they care about in, in a certain amount of time without all the usual headaches that go along with solving that problem for that customer. Right. You're a better, you're, you're, you're better. And, uh, you're better because you care. That's the, the, that's the ultimate message formula, right? And, uh, I hope, uh, uh, I hope I, I did a good job of answering that question because it really is so important. So I didn't, I didn't really just want to gloss over it before we even get to whatever you're offering, right? <laughs> so, yeah. So. So you already talked about what you're offering. What would be your offering? Uh, how, how do you come up with it? Especially like, uh, a signature offering something at least the customer thinks nobody else can offer. Well, you need to, first of all, you need to know what you're doing, right? Once, and, 
if you, if you because if you don't know if you don't if you don't have a, a skill uh, if you if you don't know how to really provide value for a customer again I'm very customer focused right then uh, you're not going to be able to have confidence in what you're selling right uh, so you need to and for it for it to be really your own your signature solution right um, uh, it needs to be something that you deeply understand that you're that you're uh, you're passionate about ideally right ideally you're 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 passionate about it because that goes a long way in uh, getting people um, behind uh, you know, getting to trust you, right? The, you need to trust, you need to have the co- self-confidence, uh, in, uh, in the value that you can provide for someone to say it in one sentence, right? Have the self-confidence, uh, in the value you can provide for someone, right? And that includes knowing exactly how to solve that person's problem over and over and over again, right? You need to be you need to have a solution that takes the customer from where he is to where he wants to be, right? From point A to point B, and uh, you need to give them the security through your message, messaging, through your communication, uh, through the through showing that you care, uh, that you are going to get them there safely, every step of the way. Can you give us a few examples so somebody listening to this or watching this can actually? Um have an example and think oh what would apply to my startup okay um so maybe we can uh, we can do uh I'll, we'll give them two examples right because uh, just to show that this is a versatile this this way of thinking um let's apply it to your business really quick so what value are you giving and uh how uh are you making sure that you give the value every single time safely who who's your who's your who's your customer who are you talking to at startup radio um basically our customer is interested in the startup world they are local um they live somewhere across the globe we are available on in almost all nations across the world and um they don't necessarily speak german so basically we make startups we make interesting developments visible in english that is something nobody else does and what what benefit does that have for for that customer uh it depends on their um on the background basically if they are a venture capitalist if they're an entrepreneur it's either a, a potential for an investment okay that's a strong benefit or it, uh, if they are working in corporate innovation it's a potential for cooperation very good one. Yeah, I think that gets often overlooked. Uh, the um, Yeah, that's a good benefit for sure. So um, you can, you certainly give a, a certain amount of exposure, right, to startups f- mm-hmm. for these potential investors, for these potential partners. Yep. Right. So I, I see the value there, right? So that's very clear. So next step is, okay, how are you able to ensure to that customer, right? Who you know? Let's let's for the sake of the for uh, for the sake of the example, call them um, uh, call them a VC, right? Um, or maybe some private equity uh, investor, right? Um, how can you ensure the quality of your service delivery and the that you that you get the desired result every single time, basically? Mm-hmm. How can how do, how would you do that at Startup Radio? Uh, we have a framework. Uh at first how we set up all our interviews secondly we talk to all the startups beforehand before the interview and the step even before that we have to decline about 70 percent of the startups that approach us because they either not fitting in our setup or they're not fitting in the interest of our clients meaning um if you have a novel version of a door stopper for example that's not necessarily what we're talking about here we talk more about digital globally scalable solutions right so that that just shows okay you're also very clear about you know the, the interview partners you choose right to, in order to yep. uh, in, in order who, who are you know part of the service that you deliver right you, that you have the interesting interviews interesting interview pa- um, partners for your specific customer right and br- 
and maybe even bringing these two together, right? So, so some, so uh, there's a there's a, a circular benefit, let's say, right? Um, and now the uh, question uh, becomes, um, how do you communicate that? How do you how do you how do you make that business that that is there? You see that there's a benefit there to be had. There's a problem. There's a gap in the market, right? Now, how do you how do you monetize that, right? So we've maximized the value, right? To get back to you know the three steps to success, right? To building your business, right? You maximize the value for the specific customer avatar. You have a message, right? Right? What is your message if you uh, have you have you done that little exercise like the uh, um, bringing your br br your one sentence pitch? Um, what we usually do is uh, something a startup said about us. Um, it's the authority on German startups. That is a good testimonials, right? Testimonials, oh, uh, testimonials always drive uh, drive the point home in the end. Um, but uh, the which is which is basically the proof, right? That you are the, uh, that you are uh, the as as your customer said, as the testimonial said, the, the authority on German startups, right? Uh, but that comes from you being very focused on a specific customer, right? A, a specific listener, right? VC investors that you are um, that you are giving access to a um uh you're you're basically creating a platform uh to expand their investment opportunities right so that's a tangible value and you do that in, in a certain way over a certain time um without maybe the usual headaches that they would face having to do it in a less comfortable way other than listening to a podcast right so that's a that's a great message right there Right. If you if you're able to say that able to say that clearly to someone, then uh, you um, uh, you uh, since you're in the media business, right? Then you are in such a great position to uh, maybe talk to sponsors, right? For your podcast, maybe talk to uh, 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 talk to uh, whatever whoever benefits you, right? I mean, you're you're deep in the business, so does that make sense to you? Yes. Okay. Good. I'm. I'm. I'm glad. Right. So then. One <laughs> so then, once uh, you've uh, you've, dem you've demonstrated your value, you have a business model to sustain. C continue creating that great uh, uh, solution for your customer. That podcast. Right. That's informative. Expanding investment opportunities for um, globally. Right. Um, then it becomes a question of okay, how can I sustain that? Right. How can I make money with it? Right. You're monetizing now. You know this platform, right? Uh, because you've uh, you can demonstrate that it pays to uh, associate with you in some form, right? Uh, or uh, advertise on your platform, or um, whatever other services that you offer uh, that are tied to startup radio, right? And there, I think uh, it, it would be up to you to say, right? Um, because there, the, the imagination. Uh, for for services you can provide to a, to your specific customer, hey, as long as you're able to provide it consistently, persistently, do it right. And then it becomes a question. So once once you've once you are actually making sales, once you're in business, then it becomes only a question of how can I multiply this? How can I multiply that sale over and over and over again? And how can I scale it? Right. So you have the maximize, monetize, multiply um, uh, trifecta. Right? How can I scale this business? Uh, how can I uh, do that? And uh, the the best in uh, in your um, field is uh, to become super efficient about how you distribute your content. Right? How can become super like that's the question you need to answer. How can how can this framework that I've come up with be scaled to make it super efficient that I can provide this value on a large scale? Uh, which will uh, which will cement me as the authority on German startups around the world. Mm -hmm. right. So uh, there, it's really about then uh, becoming uh, very very um, 
technical and deliberate about how you spend your time and uh, how you can uh, automate uh, the activities that uh, you uh, that are basically not in the service of serving even more people right that are really tech your te the tech all the technical parts of your business uh, how can you automate them so you can focus on what really matters caring about your customer and figuring out how you can serve them better right and that's one uh, th that in part uh, is done through scaling and growing your business right and um, um, in today's day and age, you do that through advertising, right? You need to get your message out there again and again and again, right? That's how you can drive, um, you know, um, that's how you can drive interested, uh, customers to your, to your business, uh, through either paid or organic, uh, means of, uh, these days online marketing. But I wouldn't, I still wouldn't underestimate, uh, the, um, uh, the other forms of advertising as well, because there's, there's some, there's some interesting, I see some interesting opportunities there as well that kind of blend in with the, uh, with the digital world. Uh, it's kind of leveraging the, the physical world, uh, right, uh, in a, in a much smarter way, uh, to get the most out of, uh, out of also the digital, uh, means of advertising. And who, if, <laughs> I think talking about that marketing services, uh, I think that could be a, a whole nother, um, uh, podcast episode, <laughs> but yeah, that's it. Maximize, monetize, multiply, maximize value, monetize your business model that, uh, transports that value and then find a way how to do it over and over and over again for as many people as possible. Yeah. But it's also, yeah, that's it. Very simple. <laughs> Very simple. And everybody who would like to uh bounce back and forth and ideas with you uh basically they can go down here in the show notes and have a look we'll also have in our blog post all the show notes you provided to us and um of course your website so people can look up even more content yes that would be awesome uh guys get in touch with me um uh, I, I'm I'm doing a lot of communication over LinkedIn, so that's really the most practical. Currently, the most practical uh, way to get a hold of me. Um, uh, but I'm looking also into um, uh, into uh, letting people get in touch using SMS. Right? Um, there's a yeah. That's 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 all, maybe also another whole topic. Uh, the, the whole sales organization and the whole, um, uh, the, uh, plethora of available options of, uh, selling more sales to people who want to buy it. <laughs> um, SMS marketing. I think that's, that's something really interesting to me right currently, just as a little side note. Um, I don't know if anybody, uh, has made any experience with it, but giving out your phone number and having people interact with SMS, um, that's a, that's a, uh, I see that as a, um, huge opportunity. Yes. Uh, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a short message service. Uh, it could also be something like telegram, uh, WhatsApp or any other means of communications you have on your cell phone. Absolutely. It's all a matter of, um, uh, identifying a, you know, a technology that lets you do that, uh, uh in a, um, in a scalable way, right? Because that's ultimately what you need to do if you want to grow your business. You need to, um, first of all, make sure it's built on a solid foundation, right? Uh, and then um, systematized and automated as much as you can, right? So you can focus on, you know, what really matters, caring about your customer, uh, and then optimizing the, op optimizing the communication, which ultimately to me, sales, is just communication, extremely goal-oriented communication. Um, and um, uh, it's uh, so important that that communication is as clear and as effective as, as possible, right? I think that's maybe a, a, a good, um, uh, another good thing to mention, like, okay, yes, there's this framework that I have, maximize, monetize, multiply, 
right? Um, and it's very, very technical uh, and very like uh, specific. Uh, and uh, I, I can with confidence say that um, it, it works for any business model you can imagine. I mean, we just we just did uh, we just talked through a, a, an example uh, like uh, data radio, but we can also uh, applying it to uh, my data business. Right, the data warrior, it also works, right? How do we want to, uh, let's, let's apply it really quick. To a company who uh, wants to get the most, uh, that always sounds so cheesy, get the most out of, you know, for a company that wants to be productive, right? Insanely productive and competitive in a digital economy of 2021 and beyond, right? Um, you need to become a data company, right? If you are not in some way, shape or form leveraging your data in order to achieve better business results, right? You will not stay competitive in the long run, right? Because everyone's doing it, right? But the real differentiator is, are you doing it well? And are you empowering your whole company to leverage this power, right, uh, of data? Um, so you need to, um, first of all, identify what do I want to achieve? Right? What's my business? What's my specific business challenge that I want to solve, and how can I measure the success? Right. That's 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 the first thing that I uh, that I want to set up with my clients. Right. How can we measure success for you? Right. And then coming back to okay, key performance indicators (KPI). Right. It's a it's a it's a it's a um, acronym that gets thrown around. Everybody's talking about KPI, right? But I think you've also experienced that sometimes these KPI are very misaligned and they lead to poor decisions. If, if somebody's making decisions based on the wrong KPI because they didn't, they were not clear about what really matters for their success. They, they were looking at or you find the case in very large corporates that basically they're, they're like big data, like reporting departments. And basically the people who are deciding based on KPIs are not really always 100% sure what amount of data from which date, like talking about time actually goes into this KPI. Indeed. Like the, 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 the corporate world, world is full of examples of this. Right. Um, so and they have so much data available, right? Often, uh, it's, uh, often it's a, uh, uh, often uh, executives just become overwhelmed by the amount of data that they have available. And again, here, I would say they are drowning in data, drowning in data. I, I love the alliteration as well. Um, <laughs> but so it's like, how do you, how do you swim in that data lake? Right. You want to enjoy it. And how, how do you maybe also swim over to the beach and just enjoy, enjoy it a bit, enjoy your data lake, right? Uh, uh, you need to be very specific. Again, it boils down to, um, it boils down to knowing what you want, right? What, uh, so what constitutes success, right? That's, that's the most important question, right? And how do we measure these key results that we want to achieve? How can we measure? And what What's also very, very important for me is uh, most companies are just measuring their success in sales, but actually sales, final sales are just a product of a long queue. And if you only focus on scale, on sales, this queue will get cut down and cut down and cut down. And then your product may lose value over time or may not be as competitive anymore. And then your sales are declining and you are actually reacting on investing more money in sales. So basically you have to have KPIs that go all along your product. If you're a bigger company and you cannot only measure scales, there will be, uh, there have to be some KPIs before sales. Sorry. Foundation. What's your foundation, right? So the quite the ulti the question is, what's your timeline? Do you have a long-term view? Or do you have a short term view? Do you even want to be in business in a hundred years? Do you want to, do you want that at all? That's a question that's, that you need to answer. You, what, what, what am I doing? What, what purpose is this company serving? Right? 
and that that really uh, determines uh, also the these baseline KPIs, these fundamental your fundamental KPI that that you ideally don't want to change over your life, right? Um, if we're t if we're like relating it to uh, to to us as people, like what values do you do do we do we hold deeply, right? And how do we measure those values, right? Uh, is as important as the technical KPIs such as sales that measure our short term success. I, th I like to think of these values, these what you were talking about, right? These baseline KPI as uh, long term values that we hold, right? That um, that make up a great uh, deal of how we perceive our success. If that makes sense, right? So that's that's super important, uh, and everybody needs to understand why we measure this, right? We need to care about again measuring this because it because it, it helps us achieve our purpose in the long run. And yes, in the short run, it also hopefully makes us a lot of money because we're in business, right? And we want to also uh, make a lot of money so we can help more people, right? And uh, that. That is success, right? In business, and and that's and success is fun, right? So let's have a lot of fun, helping a lot of people, right? It's um, I highly recommend. Uh, I, I um, uh, just picked up a copy of uh, Game Time Decision Making by uh, David Meltzer, um, and it's a it's a great read so far. Uh, and uh, what I also admire about him is that he has this very simple uh, way of thinking about business. He's he wants to make a lot of money, help a lot of people and have a lot of fun. Uh, and uh, I think um, that's a great philosophy to, ho to have. And uh, uh, again, it all boils down to what do you care about? What do you want? Right? You need to know exactly what you want. And that and that uh, will determine what you measure, right? In to get you to success, what do you care about? Uh, and then uh, the uh, the next step, uh, once you've once you've kind of built that foundation, is actually running this running this program, right? We're in the field of data, right? Running this this uh, this data program uh, to uh, empower the people that are that are day to day running your business, making decisions that drive that long term strategy, right? To help them make the best possible de decisions in the short run, and uh, uh, always aligned with the long term goals. Right, and that's really the uh, that's really the um, to me that's the responsibility of top level ma management of top level executives to make sure that everyone's at all times aligned to the long term strategy of staying of becoming a generation. For me, it would be becoming a generational company like Lego, for instance. I, I, over a hundred years they exist, right? Uh, and uh, for me, that would be. Um, uh, that, that that's we we we, don't, we can compare it also in the financial world. Warren Buffett, why is he the most successful? Because he's he's been playing the game the longest, and he's been taking advantage of compound interest for the longest period of time, right? And and so he so he's he's he, he's investing in such a way that uh, that um, uh, that uh, allows him to stay in the game. Right, long enough to make abnormal returns. Right, he's optimistic about the future, pursuing long-term strategy, uh, and uh, in the short term, making buying and selling decisions. Right, that are always aligned to that strategy. To to just give that example, and that's that's the that's that needs to be your foundation, uh, and then you can empower people to make these decisions on a daily basis, right, in your organization, and then it's really about. Um, Scaling that throughout your organization. If we're th if we're talking about a corporate, right? Uh, th th this 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 initiative, this kind of initiative, might start in one particular department, and then people start seeing, okay, doing this data driven way of thinking, establishing a strong data culture uh, centered around a you know a learning and a growth mindset, um, really does improve results. And and everybody's so happy in that department because they they are always aligned with the company and they are always uh, they always know exactly what part they contribute to the success, right? So it's a very motivational thing to measure our success, right? I think I think the best example is if you're trying to lose weight, you step on the scale and you see you you, you know you're measuring that to see that success because that makes you feel good. That would be also an example I could take to drive my point about KPIs home because you're only measuring 
at the scale your weight. So basically not everything that you've eaten, not everything that you've worked out. And that are basically the KPIs that provide you with the final result at the scale. Exactly. Exactly. Like you, you, you get a holistic view of your organization. You get a, uh, you, 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 you see the results, uh, and you know, that's because you've, because you've, um, set it up in such a way that these results are driven by the best possible decisions that people could have made because they had the best possible information, uh, at the time they needed it to make that decision, right? Then you've truly mastered, um, data driven decision making in business, right? And it's really about, um, from, from, from experience, I can tell you, it's really about creating a culture around data and, and get, creating a, a collective consciousness for this mindset of using data, of measuring our success, of being very aware of what we care about, right? So we're always aligned to what we want. So we are inspired to work to get what we want. I think that are amazing closing words for our audience. We are now running at approximately 50 plus minutes of recording time. So I may to have to cut it down just a tiny bit. <laughs> Nonetheless, I enjoyed it. There's a lot to yes, say. Yes, <laughs> there's a lot to say. I really enjoyed a lot to have you as a guest. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure having you here. Down here in the show notes, you'll find a link to, as we said, Simon's private uh, LinkedIn profile, as well as uh, your website, which currently I do believe redirects to a uh, Canva website, right? Yes, I'm currently um, I'm currently redoing the website, um, uh, and um, I I hope by by the time this airs that uh, that it will uh, that it's done. Uh, I'm uh, I've, I'm putting a priority behind it, uh, so uh, it should be done. Um, and like I said, reach out on LinkedIn if you are interested in anything that we uh, or interested in talking to me about anything we talked about today. Uh, I'm always happy to have a chat um, if my calendar allows it. Uh, and um, uh, Jan, uh, or Joe, sorry. <laughs> um, uh, I really want to say thank you again for this opportunity. Um, and uh, this is a great uh, channel that you've that you've started here, and uh, the way you are going about it, the uh, the you've showed me the way of working. Uh, it's it's inspired me to. Um, um, it's inspired me. Full stop. It's uh, so thanks for loving uh, letting me uh, say my piece here, letting me show the data warrior, uh, and uh, presenting my frameworks. I do appreciate it a lot. Great. Thank you very much. If you are a professional looking at the European startup scene, Germany is a place you cannot miss. Fortunately for you, there is StartupRad.io, the authority on German startups. This English-only podcast brings you fresh interviews each week. Most likely, you have never heard or read anything only startups before in English, but you will in the future. Be ahead of the curve and subscribe to StartupRad.io podcast or check for the StartupRad.io internet radio station. Check your Alexa for the StartupRad.io skill as well.